function. The second way is to use this data analysis function. So go to graph, legacy dialog, and bar. Here, we need a simple bar chart, and we're going to use the summaries of separate variables. If you have summaries for group tick before, we need this one because we want one bar to represent one new variable. And then here, what you're going to do is that you're going to move in Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram into your bars represent and then no answer as well. So we want a bar to represent each of these variable. Click on change statistics. And here, this is what you're going to do. We are not interested in measures of central tendency or dispersion. We're interested in percentages above. Why are we interested in percentages above? That's because we just want to plot a graph looking at only the people that said yes. So we want values greater than zero because we only have zero and one. So it's just going to create a bar chart of ones. Click on continue. You can see this is changed. This only this percentage now, no answer. But you have to change Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram as well. Don't forget to select all of them before running it. So percentage above zero and then click on continue. Click on OK and you should get your bar chart. As you can see, this bar chart is the same as what you have up there. And if I put the values now, so let's double click that, select this, right click, show data label, close this window now and close this one as well, just to compare the two so you can see that it's exactly the same thing. If you look here, let's just expand the screen for a second. Look here, 75, 50, 50, 25, 75, 50, 50, 25. It's up to you which one you want to use. I think this one is much cleaner because you don't have to delete anything or each of the variables are already coded with the right name here. So whichever you feel comfortable with, you can simply use it. Now we've looked at creating a bar graph for multiple responses. How do you create a new ordinal or scale variable from multiple responses? Let's go back here for a second. Now, let's say, for example, you wanted to count the number of social media that each of your participants use, and you wanted to use that variable, which will now be a scale variable, to do a more sophisticated analysis technique, or you wanted to use it to find a correlation between number of social media usage and maybe engagement or, or life satisfaction, for example, or any other variable. What you're going to do now is go to transform, count variables within cases, Create a new variable and call it uh, social media again. Let's call it social media usage. And then we put in Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. We don't need no answer here. Why don't we need it? We don't need it because we just use that so we can account for the one participant that SPSS was saying was missing. While in the case, they are actually not missing. But here, we really don't need them because we're just counting the number of social media that each of these participants use on a daily basis. So we're going to define the value and here we want to count everybody that has a value of one and then click on add and continue and then we click on OK. It said count social media usage, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram and execute. That's done now. If you go here, you can see social media usage for this person is one, two, so two. Social media usage for this person is one, two as well, two. Social media usage for this person is three and this person is zero. Now you have a new ordinal variable created from your nominal dichotomous multiple response variables, which is Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram. With this question, you can use a more sophisticated analysis technique to probably look at maybe engagement based on social media usage. These variables are ordinal data, and if you have another ordinal scale data, you can easily do a correlation between this variable and another variable to see a relationship. Obviously, this is just a sample. You probably have more participants than four. I just wanted to show you the sample so you can easily do that. Now you know how you can create a new ordinal or scale variable for multiple responses. It will be scale variable if you have lots of options. So if you have up to like 50 and then you want to do a count, in that case, you'll probably end up having a scale variable. So here, this social media usage is going to be ordinal data. So let me just change that so you know. The final thing to do in our to-do list is to enter open response questions. This type of question is when you give a participant orders, please specify. If you're collecting data using Quartrix, SurveyMonkey, or any other similar platform, what you'll find is that this variable is usually coded as a string variable. If you have it as a string variable, just go into your data view, go to transform, and do an automatic recode on that variable if it was string. So here, put in that orders, give it a new name, 
and record it from string to numeric so it will have number and you can easily generate a frequency table of those responses. If you're entering this manually, you can be smart with it. And how can you be smart with it? Let's go back to our variable view for a second. Now here, orders. Here's what we're going to do for orders. For people that didn't put anything for orders, you can just give them zero and just give them no. Add. And that's it. You might find that a lot of people use Twitter. So you can give a value of one to Twitter and you can give a value of two to maybe Pinterest if a lot of people use Pinterest. But for the other ones, you can just classify them as Pinterest. Now for the other ones, you can just put three and others. So you will do this in the case where you have people missing, they didn't answer no to others. And you have a lot of people using Twitter, you have a lot of people using Pinterest and others is just a wide range of different types of uh, social media platform or websites and you don't need to bother actually creating an option for all of them because you have two long options here and then click on OK. So here when you go to orders, what you would do now is that for this participant, maybe they said no, so it's zero, no. So maybe they also said no to others, but this participant probably use another type of social media. So maybe they use Twitter and this participant probably use Pinterest. That's how you code the orders or open response question in SPSS. We've covered entering variables into SPSS, getting the frequency distribution, dealing with missing responses, cross tabs, two ways to create a bar graph, how to create a new ordinal or scale variable from multiple response, and how to enter open response questions into SPSS. Now, I hope you found this tutorial very helpful. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you have any question, drop me a comment below and I'm going to answer your questions. For more ways to enter data into SPSS, you can simply go to our website, spsshelp.com, or you can just leave me a comment and I will send you a link to the tutorial.